so here's my initial beat. So let's mangle it now using these plugins. I have a couple of Scripter plugins, a MIDI randomizer, a GarageBand instrument, and a Bitcrusher set to wave folding. So what do you do next? Well, you open up Smart Controls right up here in the upper left. And down below, you'll see the Smart Control window with its well-oiled maple wood panel. <laughs> next, you open up the Smart Control Inspector. And if you don't like maple wood, well, you can go up here to the top and customize the material that my smart control is made out of. I actually prefer something a little more metallic. That'll do. So let's take a closer look at the smart control inspector. The first thing to do is to set up an external assignment. And you do that by clicking learn right here and then jiggling the controller knob of choice. And then be sure that you turn off that darn learn button if it doesn't go off by itself. The next step is to open up the parameter mappings. And then you'll see the settings menu, that little gear up there at the top. Click on that and set up your first parameter by saying add mapping. And you'll notice that it set up an unmapped parameter right there. So let's map it. Let me bring up my plugins. And uh, what shall we do? How about the note number input range for the randomizer? So you click learn and then touch or jiggle the control that you want to assign. And there it is, mapped, the input high range. And since this beat, this region is triggering different samples, so when I increase the range, you'll get a lot of different samples. And decreasing it brings us back to normal. Cool. And because I haven't modified anything yet, the range of my controller will go from 0 to 127 in a linear fashion as I turn the knob. And that's perfect for what I want to do with this parameter. Now let's map something else. So now I'll go over to the settings menu again and add another mapping. Hit learn. Now what should I do? Uh, let's do the drive control that's sending the signal into the fold algorithm on the bit crusher. So now when I turn my controller knob, the same knob, it's also increasing the amount of wave folding distortion. I'm such a West Coast synthesis guy, but I don't want it to be too distorted. So I have to go and adjust the scaling. And I'm going to do that by clicking open here. And I'm going to touch around here and click on a node. Boom. Then I'm going to grab the handle over here at the top, which you can't see too easily, but it's there and pull that down. So basically it's gonna go up to a, a controller 65, control value 65. Actually, let's make that 63 and stay there for the rest of the turn of the knob, right? So it scales kind of linearly up to 63 and then it stays flat for the rest of the turn of my controller knob. Let's listen. So now I'm controlling both parameters. Hey, let's do another one. Click on Add Mapping, then uh, click on Learn. And by the way, this Learn control shuts off by itself. And I'm going to go to my Stutter Scripter plugin and jiggle the Stutter parameter, which increases the amount of stutters as I turn the knob. I just love some of these Scripter plugins. So when I open up the scaling on this one, you're going to see that it's stepped, and I can get the graphic display by unchecking this box. Now, I don't want any more stutters than 8, because 8 gives me a good buzz. So I'll flatten it out here. So when it gets up to number 8, it's just going to stay at 8. See, right there, as I continue to turn the controller knob. So you can see that all of these parameters are being controlled a little bit differently. And that's the magic of this whole thing. So let's add another mapping. Go through the same process. This time it's going to be bit resolution on my bit crusher. So open up scaling, disable stepped, pick a curve from the presets right there, and let's take a look. 
So as I turn the controller all the way up, it's going to be like one bit. So I'm going to make my 127 value of my controller only go down to 10 bit on the resolution parameter. Okay, one more thing to make this patch complete. I'm going to add a mapping, and this time I'm going to go over to the channel strip and jiggle the send here. And that goes to a tape delay. So when I increase my controller value, I'll get some delay. There are a million different things you can do with my one knob smart control tip. Try doing this with some leads and some pads or even with some sound effects. But most of all, have fun.